Hello students, today we are going to discuss about white matter of cerebrum. In this video, we are going to learn about the projection fibers, commissure fibers and association fibers. The white matter of the cerebral hemispheres basically contain two components, myelinated nerve fibers of many sizes, neuroglia, mostly oligodendrocytes. The white matter of the cerebral hemispheres are three types. They are commissural fibers, association fibers and projection fibers. First we can discuss about commissural fibers. The commissural fibers interconnects the corresponding regions of two cerebral hemispheres. They are the corpus callosum, anterior commissure, posterior commissure Phonix habenular commissure. First, we can discuss about the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum comprises the largest bundles of fibers. Most of these arises from the part of neocortex of one cerebral hemisphere and that terminate into the corresponding parts of opposite cerebral hemispheres. It lies at the bottom of longitudinal fissure it is divided into from before backwards the rostrum a thin lamina of nerve fibers that connects the genu of the upper end of the lamina terminalis the genu it is the curved anterior end and the body or trunk which is arched posteriorly and finally the end as a thickened enlargement it is called as the splenium these are the parts of corpus callosum when traced laterally the fibers of genu curve forward into the frontal lobe and form forceps minor the fibers of the body extends laterally as the radiations of corpus callosum and the fibers from the splenium runs backwards into the occipital lobe and forms forceps major. Next we are going to learn about anterior commissure. The anterior commissure is situated in the anterior wall of third ventricle at the upper end of lamina terminalis. The fibers passing through the commissure interconnects the olfactory bulb of the two cerebral hemispheres. Other fibers interconnects the parahippocampal gyri and other part of the temporal lobe. Next we are going to learn about posterior commissure. The posterior commissure lies in the inferior lamina of stoke of the pineal gland immediately above the opening of cerebral aqueduct into the third ventricle. Next we are going to learn about the phonix. The phonix is a prominent bundles of fibers seen on the medial aspect of cerebral hemispheres. The phonix made up of fibers arising from the hippocampus. The body of the phonix is suspended from the corpus callosum by septum pellucidum the nerve fibers arising from the alve alveus a thin layer of white matter covering the surface of hippocampus and then converge to form fimbria the fimbria from the posterior column or crest of phonics arching below the corpus callosum the two crura then come together in the midline to form a body of phonix. The two crura are interconnected by fibers passing from one to other. The hippocampal commissure or commissure of phonix which actually joins the two hippocampus. The anterior end of the body of phonix also divides into anterior column or pillar. Each anterior columns of the phonix turns backwards just in front of the interventricular foramen and that passes through the 
hypothalamus to reach the mammillary body. Next we are learn about habenular commissure. The habenular commissure is a small bundles of nerve fibers that crosses the midline in the superior stalk of the pineal gland. The commissure is associated with the habenular nucleus. Next we are going to learn about association fibers. These fibers connect the various cortical regions of a cerebral hemisphere. These fibers permit the cortex to function as a coordinated whole. The types of association fibers. Short association fibers or U fibers connect adjacent gyri. The types intracortical fibers that is located in the deeper portion of the white matter. The subcortical fibers located just beneath the cortex. Next, the long association fibers connects more widely separated areas. Its types are the uncinate fasciculus which connects the inferior frontal lobe gyri with the anterior temporal lobe. Next, the cingulum. A white band within the cingulate gyrus which connects the frontal and parietal lobe with the parahippocampal gyrus. Next, the arcuate fasciculus which sweeps around the insula and connects the superior and middle frontal convolutions which contain the speech motor area with the temporal lobe and the temporal lobe contain the speech comprehension area. The inferior longitudinal fasciculus connects the temporal and occipital lobe. The occipitofrontal fasciculus extends backwards from the frontal lobe radiating into the temporal and occipital lobe. Next we are going to learn about projection fibers. The projection fibers connect the cerebral cortex with lower part of the brain or the brain stem and the spinal cord in both directions. The corticopetal or afferent fibers include the geniculocalcarine radiations from the lateral geniculate body to the calcarine cortex. The auditory radiation from the medial geniculate body to the auditory cortex. The thalamic radiation from the thalamic nuclei to the specific cerebrocortical areas. The corticofugal or the efferent fibers proceed from the cerebral cortex to the thalamus, brainstem or the spinal cord. And we are going to learn about the internal capsule. Most of the nerve fibers interconnecting the cerebral cortex with the center in the brainstem and spinal cord and with the thalamus that passes through the interval between the thalamus and caudate nucleus medially and lentiform nucleus on laterally. This region at the upper end of brainstem forms a compact band and that is called as internal capsule. Above the internal capsule is continuous with corona radiata below with the crest cerebri of midbrain. The internal capsule consists of the anterior limb that is lies between caudate nucleus medially and anterior part of the lentiform nucleus laterally. The posterior limb lies between thalamus medially and the posterior part of lentiform nucleus laterally. And the genu located where the both limbs are meet. In addition, some fibers of the internal capsules lies behind the posterior end of lentiform nucleus, constituting its retrolentiform part, whereas some other fibers pass below the lentiform nucleus constitute the sublentiform part. Arrangement of fibers within the internal capsules. First, the fibers to and from the anterior part of the frontal lobe pass through the anterior limb of internal capsule. 
the fibers to and from the posterior part of frontal lobe and greater part of parietal lobe occupy genu and posterior limb of internal capsule third the fibers to and from the temporal lobe occupies the sub lendiform part whereas those two and from the occipital lobe occupies the retrolendiform part of the internal capsule ascending fibers in the internal capsule these are predominantly thalamocortical fibers from thalamus to the all part of cerebral cortex and forming thalamic radiations or peduncle first we are going to discuss about anterior thalamic radiations or frontal thalamic peduncle the anterior thalamic radiations passes through the anterior limb and fibers to the frontal lobe from anterior and medial thalamic nuclei and also that carrying fibers from hypothalamus and limbic structures and the superior thalamic radiations or superior or dorsal thalamic peduncle that passes through the genu and posterior limb of capsule to the somatosensory area from ventral posterior nucleus or nuclei of thalamus posterior thalamic radiations or caudal thalamic peduncle it is from the thalamus to the occipital lobe that include optic radiations from lateral geniculate body to the visual cortex that lies in the retrolendiform part of internal capsule then inferior thalamic radiations or ventral thalamic radiation that's from the thalamus to temporal lobe that include acoustic radiations from medial geniculate body to the acoustic area that passes through the sublendiform part of internal capsule we can discuss about descending fibers in the internal capsule the corticopondine fibers the frontopondine fibers are the most numerous that passes mainly through the anterior limb the parietopondine fibers mainly passes through the retrolendiform part and the temporopondine fibers from the sublendiform part the occipitopondine fibers from retrolendiform part corticospinal and corticonuclear fibers first we can discuss corticonuclear fibers that's from cranial nerve nuclei to the head and neck that passes through the genu of internal capsule then the corticospinal fibers from several discrete bundles in the posterior limb and are arranged from before backwards upper limb trunk and lower limb like really corticothalamic fibers from cortex to the thalamus and from the part of thalamic radiations and we can discuss some clinical anatomy first we can discuss about aging usually after 60 or 70 or more there are changes in brain the changes are the prominence of sulci due to the cortical shrinkage the gyri get narrow and sulci get broad the subarachnoid space become a wider there is enlargement of ventricle occurs we can discuss about dementia in this condition there is a slow and progressive loss of memory intellect and personality the consciousness of the subject is normal dementia usually occurs due to alzheimer's disease then we can discuss about alzheimer's the changes of normal aging are pronounced in the parietal lobe temporal lobe in the hippocampus person who forget everything finally the parkinsonism the lesion of the corpus striatum lead to parkinsonism with loss of automatic association movement and mass like face and lead to pipe rigidity the person who always suffer with tremor on head and 
food on hand like that these are some clinical importance and thank you